I'm Alec Walker, and I'd like to tell you about work that colleagues and I have done to identify when large medical databases are suitable places to conduct comparative effectiveness research. Let me introduce some graphics. I'll use a capital sigma to designate a provider. It's a summation sign because doctors add up data and come to decisions. A question mark identifies a patient. In a medical encounter, a patient comes to something that he wants fixed. A doctor brings experience and training. The doctor elicits information. The doctor uses all the available information to come to a treatment decision. Had the patient gone elsewhere, a different doctor might have brought different training and experience to bear to come to a different decision. Another doctor might have made yet another decision, and so on. Let's imagine for simplicity that all prescribers choose one of two treatments. If the same patient stands an equal chance of getting treatment A or treatment B, depending only on which doctor he happens to visit, the treating community is in equipoise. Our analysis screens population medical data for equipoise. We propose that where we find it, we found the suitable place for doing comparative effectiveness research. These graphs illustrate the technique with community-acquired pneumonia. The x-axis sort patients according to their probability of getting the treatment shown in red. This is called a preference score. The x-axis depicts how many patients there are at each preference score level. The two lines in each graph represent the patient preference scores for the two treatments examined. The left-hand graph compares the use of levofloxacin and azithromycin at different preference scores. At the midpoint of preference, we have patients for whom the treating community is in perfect equipoise. Out to either side, we can sketch bounds of relative equipoise, say a two-to-one odds of getting one treatment or the other. Among patients who received clarithromycin or moxifloxacin, fewer fell into this range of relative equipoise. If no patient characteristics predict treatment, then the two treatment groups will be alike. Here's the situation with levofloxacin and azithromycin patients. The two groups are very similar. Look at treatment failure. The patients who received levofloxacin had fewer failures. They did better. Does this finding deserve ad hoc research? We believe that it does. Our tool has identified one treatment decision for which at least one prescriber community seems to be of divided opinion. A difference of 28% in treatment failure rates would be important if true. The tool has shown us that this population is suitable for comparative effectiveness research in that many patient characteristics are balanced and so are not confounders. But patients are more than the totality of their recorded characteristics. Two patients who appear to be similar with respect to their recorded characteristics may yet differ with respect to their unrecorded characteristics. Proper research requires that all important covariates be measured and accounted for. Keepers of large medical databases can easily apply our tool to identify situations of apparent empirical equipoise. We can know when comparative effectiveness research might be successful and when we should avoid it. Thank you for your attention.